Irish line, an Australian international speedway rider. Three months ago, I su suffered a spinal injury, two fractures, a shattered vertebrae, and I've had two rods and eight screws inserted into my back. This video's a kickstand to, to get me back where I want to be, and that's racing a motorbike. Being back in the workshop, I, I um, yeah, it's uh, it's a weird feeling because I don't spend a lot of time in the workshop these days because I'm so busy. Well, I was so busy um, racing, you know, in three leagues um, all over Europe. So um, I do pop in and, and try and get in now and again. But you know, just seeing the bikes, um, I get that that feeling in my guts. And just on the weekend, I actually had a had a ride around um, my Polish track, uh, which I surprised uh, the fans there. I, I obviously hadn't been back for, for since the accident and um, that feeling I got when I jumped on the bike, when it started, uh, it was a good feeling, um, which was great. It wasn't a nervous feeling or a scary feeling. It was that feeling I get when I sit on the bike bef before the start of every meeting. Um, which I do religiously, and I actually did it in the pits. I probably looked like an absolute geek, but I did it in the pits where no one was watching and felt like I was going out for a race. But um, yeah, just, you know, even when I was going to watch them, you know, the sound, the smell, it gives you that, that buzz, that feeling in your guts, um, you know, which explains why I want to race again. It's, uh, like anyone, if they were doing motocross, uh, MotoGP, if they're hooked on it, um, you know, that's it. Yeah, it's just obviously um, coming up to my 31st birthday, and um, you know, people have been asking, asking me about, you know, after such a horrific injury, why, why, why risk it and come, come back? You know, I've, I've had 15, 15 good years of, of, of racing in Europe. You know, I've raced with the world's best. I've beaten the world's best. Um, what what left have I got to prove? Um, I I look at it that I'm only yeah 10 and 31, but I look at other riders who are a lot older than me. Um, Greg Hancock for one. Uh, Thomas Golub. You know, these guys are 43 plus. You know. And uh, yes, they've been lucky with injuries, but there's also been other riders who, who are 40 and have had spinal injuries who have come back and raced competitively. Um, so I don't think it's what I've got to prove. I just still, I, I feel that, you know, especially being captain of, of Kings Lynn, um, I feel that I'd like to be able to Win a, win a league title with, with a British club being a captain. That's one thing that probably keeps me, keeps me hungry. But also it's, it's the thing that probably eats at me the most that every time I've had a major injury, which is, you know, probably this is the third time now, I've been knocking on the door of, I've been re regarded as, as, as world class. Um, I've always knew I was a decent rider, you know, I've, ride all over the world in the world's top leagues but never really you know been regarded as as you know world class and I, I felt this year again we were we were knocking on the door um, riding well in England riding brilliantly in Sweden uh, and, and the same in Poland 
and we had such a busy year planned um, and the way I was riding it was it really was shaping up to be a really probably one of my best years yet um, and it just that's what gripes me that's what has been eating away at me that once again it's sort of hindered me obviously the last time uh, the first time I broke my back it was exactly the same I was one of the favourites to, to win the World Under 21 Championship that year. Um, previously, the year before, had finished fourth, and and to go into that year, and it's, it just feels exactly the same, you know, just to be knocked, knocked off the, the stumbling block or whatever you want to call it, you know, to the point where you know your career's taken a massive hit, and this feels exactly the same again, and that is probably what's driving me that. I know if I can get back to full fitness, I can still do it. Um, I've got the right temperament. I've got, you know, a great team around me, great bunch of sponsors. There's nothing stopping me, but bad luck. At first, we spoke a lot, and if I'm honest, reading between the lines and what he was telling me, I think he was convincing himself not to ride. And then, as time went on, he, he kind of changed and got the determination back and there was a setback with what happened with Darcy and he kind of again that didn't put him off that kind of he was very upset about it but he spurred him on to want to ride again if anybody can do it Rory will do it as long as his body holds up he will get over the mental side of it well there's no reason why he can't be get back because it, it, like I say it's very positive should his, you know, like his health, you know, everything be good, there's probably no other, re no reason why he can't. But you just don't know what the future holds, you know, like we don't know. As far as we know, his, his back's fine. Um, yeah, so we have to go on what they say. Um, and that gives him confidence um, to move forward in racing. So we, we have to go on advice that we get, so. Whatever decision he makes, we'll have to back him to the hill. You know, as I've always said, there's two engines on a speed where bike, one's in the frame and one's in the head. And that will, that one, the engine in his head, is the one that will take the hardest repair to get back to the stage where he knows he's confident enough to um, win races at the highest level. I think one of the reasons we do get on so well is he's, he's a straight talker and and we laugh and joke about some init certain initials he has on his Kevlar's, um, which refers to his toughness. Um, you've got to be tough to be a speedway rider, but Rory, not only is he tough, he's professional, and he does a lot of things behind the scenes that people don't realise and helps people. And me and him, we talk all the time about speedway, whether it's riding or bringing youngsters on, and he's just got speedway through him in his blood. And I think any speedway rider has got that toughness about them. Being a captain in a speedway team is obviously uh, different to you know being a football captain and rugby captain or something like that. It's um, as much as it's team orientated, it's very individual because we have to ride for ourselves for each point. But also at the same time, you know, uh, especially now with a lot of a lot of British youth coming through, it needs to be you know looked after. It needs to be you know. Um, you know, sort of babied through, you know, we're talking, like we talked about earlier, you know, young lad Lewis Kerr, you know, I've watched him come up through the National League, uh, into the Premier League and now in, into the Elite League, you know, I'm not saying I've, I've had anything to do with it, but I'd like to think, you know, the nights he, he come for some advice and, you know, I was able to, to help him in, in any which way. Um, and I've been told, you know, previously, that's why I was asked to be captain at Kings Lynn in the first place. Um, you might hear me before you see me, I'm quite gobby, um, but I always got a way of, of making, making any lad in the team smile. Um, so for me, it's not about, you know, revving guys up and, you know, getting them psyched up. It's more about trying to get these lads to remember why they did it, why they're doing it in the first place. And that's the enjoyment factor. Um, always like pulling their legs and that in the change rooms and on track walks and things like that. So. If, if my greatest asset of being a captain is, is, is always making sure there's a the fun factor there. And um, 
you know, even when I'm now, when I'm there with the lads now, even though I've, I've sort of just club captain and not sort of the team captain at the minute, I still go on the track walks with them now and still pull their leg and take the piss out of them, which is, which is good because it obviously relaxes them and, and um, they don't have to get all nervous. So, um, but they always find a way to get me back so at some point. Like I was saying before, it was, if there was one thing that would keep me going, it would be, you know, I've, I've, I've won league titles with, with different clubs, um, but to captain a side to, to a league title would be, would be pretty cool. Um, not, many, not many people can say they've done that. Um, growing up as a, you know, a young lad in, in Darwin, getting the Speedway Star magazines and rerun videos and watching you know, all my heroes win, win league titles with their clubs and stuff like that. It was always one thing I always wanted to do. And I did that, you know, uh, with, with the Premier League side, Edinburgh Monarchs. And then I did it with, um, uh, did it with Coventry um, on more than one occasion. So there's only one thing, the only, there's only one better feeling would be to, to captain a side to a, to a league victory. Um, it would, uh, it would pretty much, besides winning a world championship, you know, I may have missed the boat on that. You know, I have, I have won a FIM gold medal in the World League Championship, but if I was to get a satis, you know, a satisfied feeling would probably be that, winning a league title with, with, uh, with Kings Lynn being the captain. <laughs>